Hi, Randy, K7AGE. I've got an empty spot here on my operating desk, and I've got a new solid-state amplifier and a new automatic antenna tuner to go in there. I recently received my KM3KM Electronics uh, 3S solid-state amplifier. This is a 1200-watt solid-state amplifier using one device and their matching antenna tuner. So let's go to their web page and I'll introduce them to you if you're unfamiliar with them and uh, see what they have to offer. All right, let's have a look at the km3km.com website, see what their amplifiers are. So this is the, the home page where it's talking about the Lux, but I have the 3S. So let's look at the products tab here and let's go through the three main products that they have. So. I'm going to start with the 3S here. This is the amplifier that I bought, and the price on that is $2,800 plus, plus shipping. And the way this works is that, and here's some warranty stuff and some things. So the way this works is that you fill out this area here, you call sign and, and email, and in the message you say, I want an amplifier. And you get put on the list. I got put on the list. I signed up for this uh, around February 22nd, 2022. And I got the amplifier um, about a week ago. So it was uh, a little over a, a year to get the amplifier. When I first ordered this, they sold it only as a kit. So here's some pictures here. Um, And here's what the back looks like. So um, you can run it on 120 or 240. Um, has three three antenna jacks, RF in, push to talk, and a ELC automatic limit control if you want to use that. And uh, here's what the touchscreen looks like. You get your uh, power. My call sign will be up there, and I'll show you reflected power in a bar graph. What's your um, drain current of the LD MOS? Um, devices. There's one transistor in here. <laughs> so multiply 38 times 53. It's over 2,000 watts right there. Here's some status indicators. Uh, this has a lot of safety things in there, which we'll see how those work. You can select the antenna and you can um, configure it for what antenna for which band. Um, it runs off a 65 volt power supply. So there's this switching power supply inside. And back when this was originally offered, and when I originally ordered it, it was only sold as a kit. So the boards were all assembled and tested as a set for your amplifier. Um, and uh, performance data was provided, then they um, packed it all up and sent it out to you. And when you receive this, you would um, basically do all the mechanical work, mount everything in, and there was a little soldering involved. And we'll see that more in another picture. So here's the amplifier. There's the one transistor, 1200 watt amplifier. This is the controller board with, looks like some nano derivative uh, processor to run it. And down below is the output filter sections. And you'll notice that the, um, um, now the transistor here, the LD MOS, is mounted to a big copper heat spreader, which is then uh, attached to the heat sink. So this spreads the heat heat out. Heat sink dissipates it along with a fan. Um, you can see the bandpass filters; they're underneath there. And this is basically all the soldering that was required was to solder these coaxes on. And, and this is Teflon coax, which is really makes this nice because it's going to take a lot of heat here to get this braid soldered onto the main ground plane of the board. But since it's all Teflon, it doesn't melt. So um, I think some people had maybe a hard time getting that soldered because of the, the massive area there that took and uh, sink the heat. Um, 
But then they got them type accepted, and now they only sell them assembled. So I didn't get to experience putting this together. Here's a shot of the output filter. Um, at bandpass boards, you can see all the relays around it here on each side. So you basically get on the list and you wait. <laughs> the I just roll this up here. You can see, yeah, again, this is what the display looks like. The other thing I've ordered, and I have, is the antenna tuner. The amplifier does not have a built-in antenna tuner. So these, um, you don't have to get on a list. They build up a bunch of these, and then they um, uh, will say on the homepage they'll be available on, on a Saturday morning, and, and um, people are there right there at that right time to order them. It's $800. Um, it's a 1,200-watt tuner. 1,200 uh, watts for sideband, 1,000 for CW, 700 for the digital modes, 300 watts on six meters. Um, and so that's the antenna tuner. Um, they just sold, they just um, posted a thing this past Saturday, so that would have been uh, March 4th, uh, that they had 200 tuners available and they sold out in like a couple days. See, it's out of stock here again. And um, they have different cables available. So I purchased the ICOM cable. So plug in the back of my IC7610 to become fully automatic. The other main product they have, which came out after I ordered my amp, is what they call the Lux. This is the 1500 watt amplifier. And um, again, you get put on a list. So here's some uh, photos of uh, what's in about this amplifier. One of the main things that's different here is that it has a USB connection. So they have a PC application that you can run so you can control the amplifier remotely. And uh, here's some of the setup things. Here's the, um, the power unit. You can see now it has two devices on here. Of course, everything's got to be beefed up for 1,500 watts versus 1,200 so if we look at the two amps here for a second, the Lux at 1,500 watts is $4,300 versus 28. So it's $1,500 more for 300 watts. It's a little more updated display, a little fancier case. It does have USB. There are some other remote type connectors on the back. Um, so I decided to stay with the 1,200 watt amp. And if we go to eham.net and look at the reviews for the Mercury 3S, the 1200 watt amp, you can see there's 70 reviews and the average rating is five. So everybody has been very pleased with it. It does say either as a kit or starting early 2022 factory assembled. So no more kit. Um, so a lot of good reviews. Some are um, fairly extensive where people have had problems um, the K, K3 KM uh, staff um, has taken care of and responded quickly. There's been some couple articles on QRZ by Dave Jensen, W7DGJ, um, issue number three. He's talking about Kenny Martinez. This is the KM3 of KM. Sitting here. So it's an interview with him. You can see he's sitting in his lab here. Um, so it talks about the company and how it got started. Um, <clears throat> Dave wrote another article here about tuning up a kilowatt where he kind of uh, goes through and reviews and tests the LDG, the MFJ, and the, and the Mercury um, antenna tuner. One of the things he mentions in here is that the Mercury, the KM3 KM, does not have any tuning memories. And it achieves a tune in typically one to two or maybe two to three seconds if it's a, a big change or a big uh, a mismatch. So, so with no memories, it's always going to have a fresh tune. If it only takes a second or two, that should be fine. And uh, issue number nine, he goes through and... He's got a Lux. 
So he's talking about the Lux, and there he sees, you can see it, he's got it with the antenna tuner. Of course, it's a 15 watt amp, 1500 watt amp with a 1200 watt tuner. And uh, so people are wondering, will there be an upgrade tuner in the future? Don't know. And you can see the Lux has some nice looking screens with some traditional looking meters. So anyway, there's also a Facebook group forum. So there's a KM3KM Mercury Users Forum, uh, which i have uh, a member of. There's 910 members. So this is a lot of good information here. Um, here's somebody wondering uh, what intended tuner works, works well with the Lux. Um, here's somebody selling a three for $400 more than buying it new. Depends if you can't wait or not. Somebody who got their... Um, Somebody who got their antenna tuner was able to get that. <clears throat> so anyway, there's a lot of good information on, on here. And uh, one of the things with the amplifier, you do not get an AC power cord. So occasionally there's another posting on here about power cords. So um, I bought mine off of Amazon where I found a link here for it before. So anyway, there's... Uh, if you're thinking about one of these apps, I would say if you're a Facebook user, <laughs> not a lot of opinions there, um, take a look at the forum. You can see kind of the, uh, the traffic that that generates. Now on to some real hardware. So making two videos about these new installations, this video is going to be about the antenna tuner, and the following video will be about the amplifier. I figure get the antenna tuner in, connected up to the IC7610, make sure that's all working, and then just place the amplifier in between, add another coax and push the talk line and plug it in the wall and see, see what happens. So I've already unboxed the antenna tuner, uh, but I haven't set it up and operated it yet. So the antenna tuner comes wrapped in bubble wrap, which is placed in a box, and that box is wrapped with more bubble wrap and it's placed in a second box, so it's double boxed. So it's um, pretty good packaging. So I bought the ICOM interface cable uh, for the antenna tuner. So this uh, plugs into the external antenna tuner jack on the back of the radio. And this plug here plugs onto the rear of the antenna tuner and it makes it automatic operation. And standard and standard with the antenna tuner is a DC power cable. It just has a little uh, barrel jack on the end. And I added a couple banana plugs because I have a 12 volt distribution strip that uses banana plugs a long time before power poles. So here's the tuner. This is what it looks like. There's about a, I don't know, five inch touchscreen on the front here. There's no other buttons, switches, knobs all on the front. You can see how deep it is. I turn it around without dropping it. And on the back, there's a uh, socket here for the 12 volts to power it, a socket here for the uh, tuner controlled to make it automatic, and there's two push, two push to talks here. So one connects to the radio, and the other one will connect over to the amplifier. And what that does is um, opens up the push to talk line to the amplifier while the tuner is tuning, so um, so the amplifier is put into bypass, so only the RF from the radio is being used to tune the tuner. So here's the coax connectors on the back. So we have the input, which would be the RF going in, then there's antenna one, two, and three. Antenna one is a little, a little different. If the um, tuner is turned off, the tuner will direct connect the um, input here to that antenna jack. And then there's a big ground lug. Okay, to hook this up to the 7610, I have it pulled out. So I have an RCA cable here that uh, plugs over into this, this connector here. That'll go to the antenna tuner. And I have the remote antenna tuner control here. And that uh, plugs in there. That's all that's needed on the back of the 7610. I'll put it back. Okay, so let's hook this up. I'll hook my beam onto antenna one. That's the only antenna I have at the moment. 
I've replaced the RG58 cable coming out of the transceiver with a piece of this LM400 flex and that goes into the input control goes into the remote just plugs in here the RCA cable for the push to talk these are both the same doesn't matter which one you plug into and the 12 volts this is hot plug that in the fan started up and it's beeping let's see what's happening so I got the uh, instructions here <laughs> how to tune it up with transceiver control interface it says place the amplifier in standby I don't have one um, make sure the bypass switch and the mercury antenna tuner is turned off there would be bypass there it's off set the transceiver to 10 watts out so I'll go to the multi knob on the um, 7610 and turn it down to say 10% then press the tune button bang bang done cool let me run the power up to 100 key up the radio power 100 SDR WR 1.3 and reflected power looks like about 4 watts no and no warnings we go into setup here I don't need to beep, I don't think. Uh, brightness all the way up. Uh, set call sign. K seven A G E. Okay, there's rebooting. Got my call in the corner here. Uh, anything else was set up? Um, SWR chart. Hmm. Okay. I think that's about it. Let me go up to um, 17 meters here and drop the power down. I'm just going to leave it sitting in uh, USB and uh, hit tune. Did I did. Okay, run the power up. I got to put it in ready to see power. 1.3, 1.4. and about five watts reflected. Um, let's go up to 10 meters and we'll go to 28 let's say 4 I'm going to leave the power up I think it'll turn the power down and let's see what happens and there we are let me go to ready 100 out and about 4 watts 1.3 sleep but the fan's still running. That's why a lot of people end up putting a power switch in or turning that power supply that drives the tuner on and off. Key the button, transmit button, and it goes. Cool. Well, I was just checking in the manual to see how to set the antenna selection up. Apparently, it's not automatic, so you got to make sure to do it. And there's also no way to label them, which is kind of unfortunate. You like to have one to say beam and 140 meters, 80 meters or whatever like that. So um, that's a little bit of a disappointment. But otherwise, it seems to tune quick. It was an easy install. Um, I can hear the fan running. So I'll, I'll either um, I'll probably build a little box just in, with a switch in series with a 12 volt line uh, so I can shut that off. I don't need it to fan run into you know to suck dust into it and stuff like that but otherwise I think it's a, a neat box and uh, next thing is to drag out the amplifier and get that set up so thanks for watching this is Randy K7AGE please press the subscribe button and uh, follow me on Twitter at K7AGE yeah I'm still on Twitter I appreciate the next video will be about getting the amplifier came in there's an outer box which is then, um, well, let's start, this plugs into the remote and standard. There's a, um, um, <clears throat> on the back here, um, we have, uh, this is, um, well, uh, stays at bypass to or antenna one. So here's the three inputs on the back. Um, 